Hello, hi, beautiful and amazing filmmakers and screenwriters, and welcome to this week's Filmmaker to Filmmaker session. Earlier today, um, I still hadn't decided which question, there's been a few questions coming up in the recent weeks. Hi. And I still hadn't decided which question to address today. Every week I answer someone's question about filmmaking or screenwriting or anything. Um, anything that's blocking them, any difficulties that are coming up. And so today I actually asked people in my Instagram stories, um, you know, which question you wanted to be answered. And I am not making this up. The one that won, that got 12 votes, was the question about concept trailers. So that is what I'm going to be discussing today. Specifically, I had somebody write to me, and this person is... I have worked with them. So they were in, I teach an online course, the Shoot from the Heart Filmmaking Academy. It's like the book, except it's much more detailed and you get personal feedback. And this filmmaker is part of that group. And so I've got to know him quite well and he's actually signed up for a couple of my other courses now too. Um, and he reached out to me, he's really committed, he's really passionate, he's really making it happen. Um, and. He's struggling though with getting his concept trailer off the ground. He says he just doesn't think he can afford to do it. And is it really essential? So we're gonna dig into that today and we're gonna start really obviously by talking about what concept trailer is because some of you might not be familiar with that term. Um, in my book, Shoot From The Heart, I do advocate very strongly that you should make a concept trailer if you, you know, before you try to raise finance for your film. And the reason that I recommend it is because for me, it's been such a game changer. Now, with my first film, I got together a package to go to a financier. I had the script, I had a business plan showing, you know, how much money I needed. Um, I had the budget, obviously the schedule. Um, and so I'd really like figured out everything about how I was gonna make this movie for the amount of money that I was looking for. And I took it to the, the person that I thought might give me the money. And he looked over all this stuff and then he got back to me and he was like, okay, I actually love the script. Um, the budget's amazing, you know, it seems to hold and it would be amazing if you could make the movie for that amount of money. And I love everything about it, but this financier said to me, I just don't know if you can make the movie, right? Which was a totally fair comment because of course I'd never made a movie before. So I couldn't show him a short film. I couldn't show him another feature that I'd done. I had nothing to show. And so I said to him, okay, hold this space. I'll come back to you in a month's time. And what I did then was I went and shot a concept trailer. And I've now, I now call it a concept trailer. I don't know um, what you want to, some people might call it something else. But basically what I shot was a whole bunch of scenes from the film and also things that actually weren't in the film, but tonally or mood wise felt right. And then I cut it together into a trailer as if the movie had already been made. So it's a trailer for a movie that just doesn't exist, right? And I showed that to him. Um, and so it's like a three minute, you know, trailer for a film that doesn't exist. I showed that to that financier and boom, he was in, right? And I just went, oh, this is such a great thing to do because a lot of people, they don't know, like a lot of people that you're going to for money, they don't read scripts typically. You know, they're not film production companies, they're private equity investors, right? They're people with some money that, you know, could invest in your movie. And so for these people, you know, like reading scripts, looking over the budgets, that might not mean that much to them, but everyone on the planet, like everybody can watch a trailer and say, that looks like a good movie or not, right? Or that looks like a movie I wanna see or not. And so for me, that's what a concept trailer is, right? It's a trailer for your movie before your movie exists, okay? And for me, like I, I sort of teach a very specific formula for making them because I have done them now. I did it for my third film as well. I think there's like other bonuses to making the concept trailer. It's not just about raising money. It's also actually about like having a sketch for your film, like doing a, you know, like, like exploring your film through the, through the medium of film. Because I feel like when you um, come to shoot your film, if you've done a concept trailer, you're going to make a better film. Hey, Tully. Hi. So nice to see so many friends. Um, so, uh, 
like I think the benefits of doing a concept trailer aren't limited to raising the finance. I think you'll make a better film yourself if you do it. Because basically it's an opportunity for you to go out with actors and your camera person, your cinematographer, and shoot stuff and get a feeling for what your film is going to look like, what it's going to feel like, what the rhythm of it's going to be, what the tone is, all that stuff. And if you have the opportunity to do that, you will make a better film. Somebody said, I made one of these for my college TV project. Yes. Like how an outline probably makes your script better. Yes, exactly. You know, it's just a chance. Like I think in my with my third film, you know, I was really conscious of like getting to try out different things and sort of going, is this how I want it to look or is it this, you know? And it's a low risk um, test for everything. So I just think it's like, it's so worthwhile and not just to raise money. Although in my experience for raising money, it's the game changer. Also, if you plan to do crowdfunding, obviously if you do this, if you make a concept trailer, before you do the crowdfunding campaign, you'll have amazing material to put into your crowdfunding campaign video. So, I mean, to me, it's just like win, 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 right? Like you can't lose by making it. What I generally recommend for people, and as I say, I've come up with a sort of formula because I think some concept trailers are very effective and I think some are not so much. A lot of people like think, oh, I'll shoot a scene that is really, you know, an important scene for my movie. I think that can be a good way of doing it. Like it, de it just depends on your movie. It depends on your movie. It depends what you're doing. I personally think much more powerful than doing a single scene from your movie is shooting a whole bunch of things that you cut together to make into, as I said, like a trailer for a movie. And if you think of a trailer for a movie, it's got like the most exciting parts of the movie usually, right? It's tied together with music, maybe some voiceover, and then it's like the exciting moments of the film. And that's what I recommend people do. And I think you can usually, usually do this in a day shoot or perhaps two days. Um, I've usually done it really in a day, although usually I've traveled somewhere and so there's like a bit of travel involved. So it's taken us two days, we spend overnight somewhere. Um, but I think you can do it in a very short time. What I recommend to people and part of my like formula for doing the concept trailer is doing it shooting MOS, which means not shooting sound. So what I recommend is that in a day, you know, you have your actors, you have your um, DP, you maybe have one assistant, that's all you need. You don't need a sound person. And then you just shoot as much as you can in that day. But very important, it has to look fantastic, okay? There's no point in shooting the stuff if it doesn't look great, it has to be quality, right? So you are shooting as much as you can and in a day when you're not doing sound, you can really plow through it. And you can also get like a lot of improvised stuff from the actors, do you know what I mean? They don't need to know lines. You know, you're just going, okay, like we're in this room, now have an argument, you know, and here's what the argument's about. Just do it. And they just go and actors love doing this stuff, you know, in my experience. Um, and so then you can just explore the scenes in a really organic way. And it's not like tied down to the lines. I've also found like when I did this for my first film, Obsolidia, I think there's something very freeing being with, you know, a little group of people and being out like, okay, like where, you know, where are we going to shoot? What are we doing? Um, through that process, I've discovered, like, uh, for my first film, Obsolator, I discovered this place with the salt flats, which became, like, you know, just the the main, in a sense, like, the main location for my movie. And it wasn't in the script. You know, it was literally, like, we were out shooting this concept trailer, and suddenly we're driving along, and we see these salt flats, and it's like, stop the car, you know? And I had no idea, like, there was no scene written there, but I was like, okay, guys, just... I have an argument, you know, let's, let's pretend that you, you say this and then you go, you know, and they just go off, you know, and, and we just filmed it and we just said, all right, let's put the camera here. What about here? What about here? And that became the template for, I think one of the most, you know, one of the most sort of iconic scenes from that film, you know, and that came from the concept trailer. So, so what I recommend is I say, shoot MOS, don't do sound, shoot as much as you can, make sure that you're getting the big emotional beats. This is very important and conflict, right? If you just shoot, and I've seen some people have done these kind of concept trailers, but everything's pretty and everything's nice and it's just kind of boring. You know, and if you think of good trailers, they always have the drama, you know, what is at stake? What's gonna happen it has to be there, right? And then, you know, after you've gone out and gathered this stuff, you just like find a piece of music, put the music over it, um, and then get VO from one of your actors, 
You know, I usually just like write up something that's, sometimes I have something in the script that's close to what I can use. Sometimes I write something completely kind of different, you know? And this formula has worked for so many people. Like I've taught it for years now. People have used it for horror films. People have used it for comedy web series. People have used it for like all kinds of different sh movies. Like my movies are sort of more like poetic, philosophical, but I swear this formula works for all kinds of films. It's not just for those ones. Um, so that's how you can make one. Now this person said to me, and I think you can do it very cheap, right? Like, I, you know, cause this is one instance where I do ask actors and DP to work for deferred payment. I don't pay anybody for actually working on these things because I tell them, you know, obviously this is us pitching for the job, right? I've written a script by this point. I've invested hundreds of hours into it. I, you know, I think they can invest a single day um, into the project if they believe it. I would never ask them to work for free on the actual shoot, but this is one instance where I think it's okay to ask people to work for a deferred payment. And that's what I do to keep costs down. Um, there are costs that you can't avoid though. There might be location costs. There might be, obviously there's camera rental and insurance um, and perhaps, and feeding everybody. And then perhaps also there's uh, the cost of like putting them up if like me, you've taken them out of town and you have to put them up for the night. So these are some of the costs that you might incur. For me, it's usually, I've managed to keep the cost below $2,000. Um, and each time I've felt um, legit about putting it on a credit card, you know, of using my own money. And it's the only time as well that I recommend that I would say it's okay to do that. You know, because I just feel this is a time where, you know, if you get this right, you will get your movie made and it's worth that money. It's worth taking that chance. That's how I feel. I generally never recommend like going into debt to make your movie. I don't recommend getting yourself into stressful financial situations. But this is one case where I go like, you know, stepping up to it is not, is not a bad idea. Now, this filmmaker that wrote to me to say that they can't afford to do it right now, that the costs are too high, that the um, location costs are very high. Now, the first thing that I thought when I read his email was I did think, okay, is there another way to do it? You know, like, you know, and this is when we get into locations in general. He did say he was trying to convince some of the, the people to do it guerrilla style. Like, you know, if you can't get that location, is there somewhere else that you can get for less? And you have to get kind of a little bit, you know, think out of the box on it. And I know sometimes you've got very attached to the idea of shooting in a particular place. And now it's like, oh, but they want $500 and I just can't afford that, you know? So this is a time though, like I just go, do you really need that location? You know, what could you do somewhere else? Where could you do it? You know, it's like really try to figure out the ways to bring the cost down before you just absolutely give up on it. Um, but ultimately, at the end of the day for this filmmaker, what I want to say to you is, and this is, I'll say to everybody all the time, do you have to make a concept trailer in order to raise the money? No, of course you don't. Right? There's millions of films get made all the time and the people did not have a, you know, a concept trailer. They did not make a concept trailer. So do you have to? Absolutely not. You know, and I just think something really important, hey, um, in this whole process, like obviously like in my book, Shoot From The Heart, in the course, the Shoot From The Heart Filmmaking Academy, like I give, you know, I break it down into very doable steps and I make it very clear about what I think you should do each stage of the journey, right? And what I think is essential and what I have found to be essential. Does that mean it's essential for you? No, not at all. You know, I offer what I offer really as like what has worked for me, but I always say, trust your own instincts and be guided, okay? Do what is right for you. And there is no right as such. There is no wrong. You can't fuck this up if you're trusting your instincts, okay? Hey. Um, so, and I think this is a very important thing because we can get caught up thinking, these are the rules, this is what I have to do. I have to get the budget, I have to get the schedule before I approach any investors. I have to get the concept trailer, I have to do this. The book told me this, other people have told me this, right? That's what I have to do. You don't have to do any of it, right? You have to do what you are called to do, right? What I offer is always like what has worked for me and it's offered as a guideline so that if you really don't know what to do, oh, I could try this. This is a good thing to try, right? But if it doesn't work for you, if it doesn't feel right to you, if it just doesn't, you know, fit with who, you, you know, what your vibe is, don't do it. Trust your own instincts and do it your own way. 
people do this in like there's a million paths to success there is not one path and I sort of always feel at the core of everything that I teach of what I try to teach you know or what I hope I teach is trust your own instincts you know like you know every step of the way what you need to do right and if you feel guided to you know like you just feel like you know what I feel like I can make this happen without creating a concept trailer then you can do that right and if you feel that you have to have a concept trailer then you should have one you know if you feel like you have to go to film school in order to earn the right to direct you should go to film school but if you don't feel you have to then don't you don't have to there are no rules the only rule is in my opinion trust your own heart trust your instincts and be brave enough to like follow that calling you know even if like people say to you this is what you need even if like the common wisdom is you have to do this you have to do that you have to you know there's no way you can raise finance without these things to hell with it you know you can raise finance any way you want there's millions of examples that have done it in all different ways you know and I, you know, like I always say, like, don't listen to the experts. And that includes, you know, me, right? You know, and it sounds crazy because I've, I've written this book and I, I teach this course. But honestly, right, like, you know, I offer it just as an example often of like not following conventional wisdom, the fact that you cannot follow it and have huge success. And I feel like it's the same for everything that what I offer, you can ignore it all and, and just, you know, and do your own thing trusting myself. I know I can. Yes, exactly. And I just feel like when you trust your own instincts and I did it 100% every step of the way with my first film, I trusted my instincts. I did not do anything that was conventional. I mean, like some of the decisions I made were crazy according to conventional wisdom, right? For instance, you know, a name actress wanted to be in the movie and her manager offered $500,000 towards the budget if I cast her. $500,000 and I turned her down. I turned them down because I just didn't feel it, you know? And I, I did the right thing there, you know? And this is the thing with everything that you will do, you know, making your film. There'll always be someone like me telling you, now you gotta do this, now you gotta do that. You have to have that. You have to have a concept trailer to raise finance. And honestly, you don't. Honestly, you can just, you can do whatever feels right for you and you can succeed. You know, and when you trust your own guidance, you will succeed. I honestly believe that. Um, someone says, anyone who says can or can't regarding stuff like this is probably just talking about their own limitations. 100% and the perception that there are rules. And I think the idea that there are rules can be sort of like, it can be a bomb to us in a way because we sort of feel like if we follow all the rules, then, then things will work out. It's not true. It's just not true. You know, because I go like, you can follow all the rules and totally not make a film. You can follow all the rules and have a shitty film, right? That happens all the time, right? How do you make a great film? How do you have success at this? How do you get the financing? How does it all work out? How do you have success in life? It's by trusting your guidance inside you and doing that no matter what, you know? So to wrap it up, for this filmmaker, it's great, isn't it? We start talking about concept trailers and then we end up talking about like everything. Um, but um, to this filmmaker, you don't need a concept trailer. I just wanted to say that. I just wanted to give you that message and just give you a big boost of like, you've got this, do you know? Yeah, it is scary to be free. Somebody says letting go of rules is like letting go of an external locus of control, scary to be free. And that's it. I think for a lot of us, it's much more sort of, it feels safer to believe that there are rules and that if we do everything we're meant to do, then we will be rewarded. And I just really believe that's not true. You're already worthy of everything you dream of. You don't have to follow any rules. And when you trust like that that's inside you, that's when great things will happen. Um, thank you. I'm so glad. Uh, somebody said that, that my life streams lighten your mood. That's a great, that's a great thing. Because I think if, if you work through all this stuff, if you're making movies and you stay in that place of just like joy and creativity and excitement, that's when you'll have success. Yes, you're welcome. The filmmaker, the film, we got the filmmaker in the house who I was talking to today. And I know that you came in late. So um, just to let you know that I've been addressing your question about do you need the concept trailer and uh, you will find you will find the whole thing. Um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll post it on the stories and then I'll put it on YouTube later. Um, after instinct, think boundaries. Yes, 
Yes. But I just go trust, you know, like, so I think one of the things in our minds though too, is if we think we have to do certain things in order to succeed, right? If we think, oh, unless I have this, I'm never going to succeed, then you won't succeed, right? Like, you know, if you've put it in your head that you can only succeed at filmmaking if you do this, right? Um, then I go, like, you won't succeed at that. So if you go, I, I won't do, like, I won't get the money unless I have a concept trailer. If you believe that and then you go try and get money and you don't have a concept trailer, it's going to be a disaster. You know, you have to change the belief in your head just to go, I know I can raise money without it. I have such an amazing project. I know I'm going to convince people and I'm going to go get it. And as I said to this filmmaker, the other nice thing too on this journey is you can always um, change your path. So if you go out and you start trying to raise money and, you know, you're not getting the money and you're having dialogues with possible investors. And this is what happened to me, as I said, like, you know, I went to that investor. He said, I love all your stuff, but I don't think you can make the film or I don't know if you can make it in the film. That's why I made the concept trailer. And you might find yourself in the same situation that you're having a dialogue with somebody. They don't want to put the money in because they're not 100% sure. You know, at that point, I go to you, get your credit card out and make the concept trailer. Find the money, do it. You know, it's worth it. All right, you guys, thank you so much. Um, so nice to see you here on Monday. Belief is everything. Belief is everything and rules are nothing. <laughs> you know, and don't let anybody ever tell you that there is something, you know, that you must do, including me. I just offer what I offer because it's worked for me and I offer it as a possible outline or possible guideline for how to do things. But it's never the Bible, man. It's never the Bible. Just do your own thing. All right. I love you guys. Um, I hope that is helpful and have an amazing week.